Time now for going straight to the trading desk. Victor Adair, busy week for you, Victor. What what's what have you been doing this week, anyways, with all the action? Uh, Mike, I'd say that uh, there was a lot of action, and the trading that I did this week was very much about um, managing my existing positions and adding some new positions in what I'd call in, antes- in anticipation of and also uh, in response to uh, these huge swings that we had in market psychology. I mean, we, we started the week with a real classic risk-off pro- uh, profile. You know, the, the existential crisis, as it's been called, the developing in Italy, caused a reaction across all sorts of markets. So uh, what I did do, just to cut to the chase, was I took profits early in the week on my uh, existing bullish U.S. dollar positions, and then later in the week I actually did a, a 180 I bought some bit British pounds thinking that the U.S. dollar, which has rallied so sharply here the last, say, two weeks, uh, two months or so, might be having a correction, and the British pound, which has fallen about 8% in six weeks, might t- take a little bounce. I had started the week short of the stock market. The stock market got whacked on Tuesday as we came back from the mo- mo- Memorial Day holiday, but there was no follow-through on Wednesday. So I said, okay, I'm take the profits. I'll get out of that. Uh, Drew's been managing our position in bonds. Uh, we were been bearish bonds for months. Uh, took profits on, and when I say profits, because we've had them on for such a long time, but the bonds started to really uh, rally. Got out of those before uh, that that really turned against us. I stayed with the uh, short position. I've gotten crude oil. Uh, so to start uh, next week, I'll be uh, bearish of uh, the U.S. dollar by being long British pounds, and I'll be bearish of crude. Now, the Euro- European situation is huge, and it's not getting any play here, uh, mainly because it's being uh, overshadowed by Kinder Morgan and other I- events like that, or issues like that. But that's a biggie. I mean, you've been short the euro. That's one of my favorite positions. Um, you know, where do you where are you looking now? Because it's, it seems now to be starting to bounce on on different pieces of news coming out of Italy. Yeah, um, you, you know, the, the, let's say first of all, I thought that the U.S. dollar fell or the euro rose throughout most of last year, and I, I couldn't understand it, honestly. Mm-hmm. And it, particularly as we got into this year and the, the short-term interest rate premium that you had to be in U.S. dollars was more than 3% a year. And then finally the euro started to break, or I should say maybe the U.S. dollar started to pick itself up off the floor. But then as the euro was weakening, it got hit by these, these other waves of bad news, particularly with this developing crisis in Italy, Spain, the worry about contagion. And uh, then, you know, it's kind of a case of it never rains but it pours. Then the, the euro really started to sell off. I, I think we've got a little bounce here, maybe. The euro can, mm-hmm. you know, there's the, the, some of the panic has kind of petered out of the market. But, for instance, we had a really strong employment report in the United States on Friday. I think the U.S. dollar is going higher. And uh, so, very short term, I'm looking for the U.S. dollar to have a correction, but I think it goes higher as we go in by that, that you know, the rest of the year, that sort of that kind of time frame. Well, we'll be here to chronicle it, Vic. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I know you had a great week, so you're going to the weekend with a smile. <laughs> yes, I am. Thanks, Mike. Cheers.